The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. I'm Sandy Anastasi, and I want to welcome you to my Psychic Hour. Folks, for the next hour, we are just going to be having so much fun. You're going to get to ask your questions of myself and my guides, who are always here with me to join you and I in this hour. And me and my guides are going to take the answers to those questions that each individual has and work them into a answer, an anecdote, that will not only give you your answers, but will also give information and insight to all of the other attendees on the call. So even though I will not have a chance to answer the questions for everyone here tonight, I will make my answers applicable to everyone, or at least my guys will. They're pretty amazing guys. Now, some ground rules as to how all of this works. I know a lot of you have been here before. I'm recognizing names as I, as I check the, uh, the roster out. And by the way, welcome back. I love to see the return people because then I know you're having a good time. First of all, if you have a really pressing question and you're too shy to verbally speak it out to me on the call, well, that is what my chat room is for. And all the way down to the bottom, you'll see a, a little bit of writing. It says chat. You can click on that, and there'll be a space where you can write your question into the chat room for Lisa, my assistant. And Lisa will be glad, if she can, to answer your question herself right there. Or if she can't, she will hold that question. And when I ask for questions, Lisa's going to pick a question either from someone who has their hand raised. And that's not a question mark, folks. That is not a uh, little yellow triangle that's in the column under the hand, you click that box and that will raise your hand. So either Lisa will click on a hand or, or call on somebody who has their hand raised, or she will read a question from the chat room. So you have two ways of answering uh, or asking your questions. And if you ask those questions, uh, you know, verbally by raising your hand, please don't also write them in the chat room because when we duplicate it in both places, it really drives poor Lisa nuts. <laughs> so make it easy on her. Just, just uh, either, either verbally ask your question, that means raise the hand, and when we call on you, you get to talk to me. And if you don't want to speak because you're shy, then put your question in the chat room then. Now, I'm going to get to as many people this evening as I possibly can because that's what makes it so much fun. And here's what I want you to do. When you get called on, I want you to tell me your name, of course. I'd like to know where you are from. And by the way, we only need first names because we, we I, I actually publish these on YouTube so people get to hear them in the archives. So only first names will do. That way nobody gets put on the spot. And I also would like to know where you're from, what country, what state. And I would also like to know your sun sign. Are you a Scorpio, an Aries, a Gemini? And I would like to know one thing that this evening, as you speak with me, that you are especially grateful for. And if you'll share those things first and then ask your question, that kind of gives us the, uh, the, right, the right feeling for what I'm trying to create here with my show. Okay, with no further ado, Lisa, do we have a question yet in the chat room, or do we have any hands raised? I'm looking. I don't see anybody with their hand up yet. Oh, yes, I do. Never mind. <laughs> There's a lot. Okay. I was going to say, what, what screen are you looking at? <laughs> we have a whole lot. All right, so I'm going to go up. <laughs> And this is funny because the first name I'm going to call on, there's three different Angelas. Oh, boy. But this is Angela B. Okay. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hello, Angela. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Lisa. How are you? We're, well, I'm good. I can't say. Lisa's, Lisa is doing very, very well. And she, I can say that honestly because she's been fighting issues with her back. And today she's feeling better, <laughs> so I'm answering for her. So and I'm doing great. So thank you. And how are you doing? 
I am doing fantastic, and I just want to say I'm happy that Lisa's feeling better too. Yeah. yeah. And uh, anyway, I'm Angela from Ohio, and I am so I'm a Virgo, and so very very thankful for sharing, sharing love, sharing family, sharing gifts, sharing insights, sharing this time. So there's all kinds of things that I'm thankful for. Oh, I and, love that, Angela. I love that. And that, that is so typically Virgo, too. So all of the Virgos on the call, this is what you should be doing also right now, that whole camaraderie and, and sharing and connection to people. That's great. Um, okay, Angela, what's your question? Oh, I have so many, but I guess, <laughs> I guess I have just been like on this quest, like searching, 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 and I feel like a sponge. I can't seem to get enough. I'm just like craving and hungering for everything I can find and like I'm spider webbing from one thing to the next and another source and grabbing things very carefully I might add but uh, I just I noticed that as of late I've been wondering about my guides and I know of two but it's like the more I hunger for things I told my my dear friend that knows you I said I have a spot that looks like a slight bruise like I went to Ash Wednesday Mass or something, it's like a smudge by where my third eye would be. Is that anything that is common when you are really, really, really searching? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, um, I have had, what you're talking about is this third eye area, yes. which uh, I'm, I'm pointing to on my own head right now. And what, what happens um, is that as you begin to develop your connection to your higher self and your guides, you are stimulating both the pineal and the pituitary glands that are inside of the head. Um, if you were to make a fist with one hand and then wrap the other hand around that fist and hold your two hands together, that's okay. essentially the way the pituitary and the pineal fit inside of your head. And they're really buried way deep inside, almost dead center in the middle of the brain. Um, and so when you begin to make that connection to those higher planes, a lot of people will feel uh, stimulation uh, on the top of their head, kind of like little, little fingers touching the top of their head. A lot of times people will feel pressure in the third eye as they begin to have real strong impressions from their guides and as they begin to become more aware of the energies of the world around them. Um, so the things you're experiencing aren't unusual at all when you begin that search, especially uh, if you're doing a lot of meditation and as your psychic sensitivities unfold, um, those, those feelings can become stronger. And what you're actually feeling, I believe, is your, your third eye and your uh, pineal gland inside of the head beginning to open and also your crown center beginning to open. So that little indentation, no, I don't really think that your husband you know, socked you in the face <laughs> while you were sleeping. I think it probably is the, the, the sensitivity even to the light around you. Um, I, I've been a psychic for many years, and uh, I had my eyes laser surgery a few years ago. And uh, it was really quite an interesting experience. Uh, a lot of psychics will not have laser surgery because they're afraid of what it will do to their third eye. Well, I wasn't particularly concerned about that because I had uh, read some of the books by Rinpoche, and as a youngster, they had actually taken a tool and gone in and into his third eye and manually stimulated it. And I thought, well, you know, if he could do, if he could deal with that, you know, what's a little laser to me? <laughs> so I had my eyes lasered, but it was um, uh, for me. Most people say they don't feel anything. To me, it was excruciating. It was it was really a, not a little pain. It was major pain. Um, I saw flashes of light that were just amazing, and you're not supposed to be able to see the light, uh, you know, from that from that laser because it's uh, ultraviolet or whatever. And um, for quite a few months afterwards, uh, I was walking around in those really dark glasses, <laughs> and the light sensitivity was absolutely off the charts. And uh, I mean, obviously, I, I eventually got past, and here I am right now. Um, but I've got to tell you, the experience was uh, strange enough that even though I might need some tweaking with my laser surgery, I'm kind of hesitant to go back because it was really, it was really quite an event. So I, I do know that what you're talking about is that this whole area becomes so sensitive 
I've seen people who are practicing psychics where this area between the, uh, just at the root of the nose, actually develops like a little bump, like a protrusion. Um, and that's usually indicative of a very projective psychic. Um, if yours is sort of a little bit of a dent in there, then I would say for you it's much more receptive, you're listening. Um, but yeah, there, there are definitely, for many people, physical responses as well. Did that answer your question there? Yes, it did. Yes, Good. it did. Thank you. Yeah, I, you're just, very I even welcome. took a picture of it, and I was like, <laughs> Did you see this? Am I going insane? And she's like, no, I totally see it. So, I mean, I thought, I said, is that normal? You know, and I knew I had to ask you. <laughs> now, I do want to say, though, for people on this call who are saying, well, I've been doing a lot of work, and I don't have a bump or indentation here, and, and that's perfectly normal, too. It does not happen for everybody, <laughs> but I wouldn't get terribly upset about it. Now, if you did develop, a, you know, a, a large lump there or something like that, I would say obviously get a medical doctor to look at it too just to make sure it's not some kind of a growth that you need to have looked at. No, okay. mine's like yeah. a very, a very light, it looks like it's a light bruise or a very light birthmark. It doesn't mm -hmm. look like it's anything bad or no protrusions or mm -hmm. really implications, but I mean it's something that I noticed and I thought, what is that? <laughs> That didn't used to be there. Oh God, I've had, I have myself had so many really wild experiences um, and, and with the physical body reflecting what the mind tells it to do. Uh, my funniest story ever, uh, I was dating a, a gentleman and he was, he was going to be spending the weekend with me and he came to my apartment and the day he came, I developed this huge wart on the middle finger of my left hand. It was just huge. I mean, I couldn't even touch anything without it sticking. And it, it just appeared one day, this giant wart. And I thought, oh, my God, I can't, uh, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> and I, I went to sleep the night before he came, and I said, I am not going to have this wart. Well, the next morning, first thing I did, I looked at my hand, and I said, oh, wow, look at that. The wart's gone. And then I grabbed something with my right hand, and it hurt, and I looked at it, and I said, oh, crap. <laughs> It went from my left hand to my right hand. There it was on the right hand. Well, of course, he arrived at my apartment, and, you know, he, he had a lot of uh, a good time making fun of the ward on my right hand. I told him a story about it moving. And um, guess what? The next morning he woke up. I didn't have a ward. It was on his hand. <laughs> Not, so I have a lot of crazy, weird little stories like that. Uh, enough that uh, of these experiences of my own in my life that I know that our, our minds and our energy has a tremendous ability to affect our physical bodies. One of my favorite authors is Bruce Lipton. He wrote a book called The Biology of Belief. I highly recommend it. It's somewhat technical, uh, but it gives you so much insight into how we can literally change our genetic structure with our minds. So uh, it, it's well worth it's well worth wading through the technical aspects of it to get the meat of the book. So did you have, uh, that was, you didn't have a personal question other than that, correct? I just, between, I just was wondering how many guides can we have? Does it, is it oh, limited? No, it, it is, no, it is unlimited. Okay. It is unlimited. I believe that most of us are born with um, what I call our life guide, who is helping to direct us from birth through death. That, that life guide remembers our purpose even when we don't. We're born with a protector guide who works to keep the to, to keep those issues away from us which would cause us to get off track. Mm -hmm. And we have our higher self, which many people also relate to as a guide, believe it or not. I see that as another part of me, a higher part of me, but there are many people who see that as something separate from themselves. So they'll think of that as like their some people think of it as their guardian angel, or some people will think of it as, uh, you know, their, their God self, but some people think of that as another guide. Once in a while, I do encounter a client who has an angel that is also with them, not that uh, guardian angel, but an actual angel that is also helping and moving with them through life. And I, that I, you know, I don't know why some people get one and some people don't, but, uh, I definitely have encountered them. Now, in addition to that little tight group that's with you all the time, many people will have multitudes of guides that will come in for an hour to help them with a math problem or come in for 
a couple of months while they're working through a particular project at work or when they're working through an emotional issue. And so, you know, we have this constant influx of guides that I believe our life guide will bring in who we need at the right time to help us with a specific issue. Um, I have a really, really good class on this. Um, my Seeing Beyond the Veil class is available uh, in MP3 online, and it's divvied up into four sections. And the third section really explains the whole hierarchy of guides in, in a lot of detail. And there's also a great meditation on there, an audio meditation. And of course, you know, a couple of, uh, maybe a month ago, I did a uh, Meet Your Guides meditation right here online. I did make a recording of that, and that recording is eventually going to come out on my site. We're just, we're just, you know, involved with other things and having a little trouble getting back to that. But you will see that soon too. Okay. Great. Thanks Sorry. so much. Much Thanks. appreciated. That was. I I love those deep questions that and and fun questions that let me expand into some different areas. So thanks very much. You're, you're great, you. Angela. You have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thank you, Sandy. You as well. Thanks. Lisa, who's next on your list? The next person is Kelly. Kelly, you are unmuted. Hi, Hello. Sandy. Hi, Kelly. I'm calling from Virginia. I'm a Libra, and tonight I'm very thankful for my sister who visited me this weekend, and we had a good time. <laughs> oh, that's that's really, really nice. And I want to share something personal with you. I okay. happen to have a sister who is a Libra who lives in Virginia. <laughs> and, oh, that's fine. <laughs> and I'm getting ready to go visit her. <laughs> so, there's a little bit of synchronicity there. I love it. And what part yeah. of Virginia do you live in? Uh, Virginia Beach. Okay, she's a little further than north. She's all the way up in Sterling. Virginia oh, Beach okay. is a beautiful area, though. I envy you that you are so close to the Casey Institute. Oh, right, yes. Uh -huh. yes. I would, if, if I were living up there, I'd probably be spending every weekend uh, you know, bothering them and hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> But it's well, also, come visit. <laughs> I, oh, I, I do. I plan on it. Yes, again. <laughs> so what is it uh, that you have to ask me this evening? Um, my question is, I recently made a decision about a direction that I'm going to go in in my life, and I guess I'm just wondering if I'm headed in the right path. Well, I want to explain a little bit of astrology to you. Do you have an interest in astrology? Yes. Good. It always works out this way. In this chart that I put up here, we call this a horary chart. I know that's a horrible uh -huh. word. It doesn't mean anything mean or bad. It's just a horary chart is a chart that you cast for a specific time and it answers all the questions that are happening at that time. So you'll notice that this chart was cast for today's date at 9 p.m. And so for the next hour, I'm no matter all I have to do is look up your sun sign, and I'm going to see your answers in this chart. <laughs> okay? Wow. okay. So so let's let's look at this. Um, first off, this little jobby here, you see my cursor where I'm putting it? Uh -huh. That is called the north node. And that north node is always good because that's where your spirit is growing and evolving to. That's what you're supposed to be achieving and 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 growing and becoming. So anything that connects to that node is good for your spirit. It's good for your life. It's good for all the things that are, are going to come into your life that don't just promote, you know, your financial gain. They also promote your soul growth. So it's hitting all these different aspects. Now, okay. this north node in this chart is in Libra. Well, that means that your sun is right there. Wow, you're being shown that this is an avenue that's going to work for you. You see how that connects? Okay. Now look mm -hmm. at over here. You see this little job over here? This is the planet Mars. Well, it's a little hard to see, but it's a circle with a stinger on it. And this little glyph or symbol next to it is Scorpio. So Mars is in Scorpio. And what this says is that, number one, Mars is your action. So you're getting ready to take action on this. This isn't just 
something that you're, you know, just dreaming about, thinking about. This is something you're getting ready to apply, to get involved with. And because we have the sign Scorpio involved, and incidentally, this whole house in the natural zodiac is a Scorpio house, because of that combination, it's very possible that what you're planning on doing is either involved in some way with metaphysics, or with something where you'll be doing a lot of research, or where you might, for example, getting involved with energy or healing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, Scorpio is a very, very deep sign. And of course, it deals with money and finances and uh, a need to be somewhat secretive about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, did you get your answer from all that? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> okay. And since you are supposed to be secretive about it, I'm not going to ask you to share what it is unless you want to. Uh, no, that's okay. Okay. We'll go, we'll go with, the, with the chart. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> hey, thank you so much, Kelly, for asking. And, and you know, it gave your, your particular question really fit this chart so beautifully. And, of course, my short answer to you is absolutely, you've made the decision. You're ready to take action. This is going to be good for you. Okay. And because we have Libra involved, the other people in your life may not know it yet, but it'll be good for them, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so good luck to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And like I said, I love to teach. So when I can turn something that you ask into a little bit of uh, a teaching, it really brings me joy. So that's what I have to be grateful for tonight. Lisa, who's our next caller? Right, we're going to go down to Susan, who's been trying to learn to raise her hand for the last two weeks. So that's <laughs> Yay! So Susan, yes, Susan, you are not <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sandy. Hello. How are you this evening? Just fine. Thank you. So good to see you again. I've um, been enjoying the uh, webinar so much. I was shocked when she said Susan. Yes, yeah, she's right. I've been having a little bit of a problem, but I think we've got that worked out. Yeah. Um, as you know, my name is Susan, and I'm a Capricorn. And presently, I'm living in Indiana. And I'm just thankful, I'm thankful for life. I had a um, family member who lost someone very dear to her, and I've uh, been talking to her all day, and uh, just um, really been helping me to appreciate my family and my life and my journey and um, just all the people that I love so very much. So that's what I'm thankful for today. Thank you for sharing that. I think we all, I think that we all relate to that, Susan. We all do. And what is your, what is your question this evening? Well, I have a question about your astrology. I'm getting really psyched about it. Um, never thought I was going to ever get into that because, to be honest with you, it sounds very complicated. I'm not that bright, um, <laughs> and it's 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 been kind of intimidating. But I've been watching you, and I was um, uh, I was part of the webinar, the astrology webinar, and now I'm really interested. And my question is simply: When studying astrology, what are the benefits, if any? Uh, in applying that knowledge um, to tarot readings, because I I do I'm into tarot readings. Oh well, I can answer you really right off. When you get a reading with me, um, first of all, I go into channel. That's the first step that I do, and my guides are astrologers, and so I open that book which we call an ephemeris and they actually can read the planets right across like a sentence it's pretty amazing there's your life there it is they just read the whole thing and it's just a series of planets um the thing is that while i'm doing that and by the way i can do that too because they've taught me <laughs> you know you watch them do that for years and i know how to do that too so i'm that's a future class i'm going to teach too but um, Wonderful. i combine that with the astrology so I do, when I read, I do tarot. I have them on my desk right now, and that was your card, uh, which is the um, Three of Wands, and it's inverted, which says that you, you're, you know, you're on a journey. You've been on for a long time, Susan. Um, the ship just hasn't quite come in yet. <laughs> yes. yes, that's so true. <laughs> uh, the answer, though, is that the, all of these modalities work very well together. And uh, what I like to do when I'm teaching my psychic development classes is to really, in, in the levels one, two, and three, where they're learning their foundation and uh, things that they learn, 
I really try to get them involved with as many different things in metaphysics as I can. And even if I don't have time to teach them the whole thing, like you know, I can't really teach a whole course in astrology in the middle of my psychic development because that's it's they're they're too they're too too big. They're both too big. But I want to at least give them a little bit of a brush with that because you see, as a psychic, it's very important for you to be able to un have a good tool that you enjoy working with and that kind of talks to you, that's easy, because not every client, if you're a straight psychic like I am and like you are, it's not every client that's going to let you in. Does that make sense? Yes. You know, a lot of people, yes. particularly people who are new to getting readings, if someone's never had a reading before, they don't know how to get a reading. And they sit down in front of you and they have their arms crossed and their legs crossed and, and they cover all their chakras and, and they look you in the eye or sometimes they look at the ceiling. They have been told they're not supposed to give anything away so they're covering it all up. And what they actually do are they're blocking you so strongly um, that if you're a good channel, that block isn't, isn't going to work. You wouldn't go into channel and get the information from your guides anyway. But if you're trying to rely on your lower psychic senses, telepathy and empathy, to be able to read that you know, energy of what's going on in their life, you're not going to be able to do that because they're blocking that. But mm -hmm. if you draw a tarot card and you say, well, look at that, I picked the same card twice. That's, I, that is your card tonight, Susan. And I say, <laughs> guess what? You know, all these plans you've been making, you've really been laying this out, but now you're changing them and you keep changing them, which is why you're getting a delay here. At any rate, that's, that's part of your message this evening. But I can also look at your astrology chart, and here's that horary chart, and your Capricorn, and here's Pluto up in your 11th house, and the reason you've been getting delayed is because there have been a whole lot of things that come up in your life that, I'm going to use that terrible word, control you in the moment. They don't control you in the long term, but in the moment they control you. So they're taking precedence over what it is you're trying to accomplish and do. So you still have your dream, you still have your direction, you still have the route you're going to be going, but this comes first today. And tomorrow this comes first. Yes. So you keep getting distracted, but your goal is still there. It's just taking you longer to get to it. Yes, so I answered two I, questions I asked, for you. <laughs> yes, I actually feel frustrated. I feel really frustrated. I feel um, I'm keeping myself busy with my studies, my spiritual studies, but there is so much more I want to do, and I just feel like um, uh, I, I do feel like I'm I'm almost being held in one place for perhaps um, a better time or a better opportunity, or it's just not the right time at this at this moment and I'm trying to be very patient because <laughs> I tend to be as a Capricorn a little bit stubborn and um, I you know I'm a workaholic and I want to proceed with this but I, I just feel like there's so much just kind of holding me here so well and now you, you just gave yourself your own answer Susan and this is going to be an answer to many many people on this call um, you are a person who has created a life that you love and that you enjoy and friends and family and you know that this is good. You also have this determination to do more with the cards, to study more, to get more involved with the astrology that's now intriguing you. You have this desire to utilize your journey in metaphysics to take that next step. But it's like a seesaw. Your home life and your life as a metaphysician aren't they're not in sync they're not matching and, Absolutely. and you're you're a little bit afraid that if you were to follow your dream into the metaphysical field that you would alienate or lose those people you love and care for so much and that so you true. create reasons you're, you're your own obstacle you create reasons to not do this study or to not go and work at that psychic fair or to just keep this this thing that you can do that's so good for the family members and, oh, yeah. and, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, Susan. There's nothing wrong with your choosing to only use it as a gift for your family and friends. But if yeah. you really are motivated to use it on a larger scale, well, then you are at some point going to need to take the plunge and trust and have faith that these people who love and care for you will give you, your, they'll give you support in your journey and not yeah. try to hold you back. 
Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, you just hit it right on the head here. So um, I just have one more question for you. Um, it's about spirit approaching me. I, I, I wanted to know if you could uh, tell me if I'm getting this right. Um, when I feel a strong presence around me, uh, one of my ears, and it's always the same one, it's the right one, it feels like I'm in an airplane. And it just, I know, and I get so excited because I'm like, I know you're there. Um, I feel it on my right side, always on my right side. And it's like my ear pops and then, it goes away. As soon as I recognize it, it seems to kind of back away. I was wondering, is this in my mind or is this real? Well, the physical sensations are certainly real, okay? If it's only happening on airplanes, I would say that it, that's suspect. That could be just what's going on with the pressure in the cockpit oh, you know, no. in the airplane. Oh, no. But if this happens no, no. all no, no. the time, I would say it's definitely some kind of a message, either coming from your higher self, your guides, or spirit. And it's going to take practice, Susan, before you know what it is you're being connected to. Well, you know, I'm sorry. I, I probably didn't explain that. I just just want to go back and say it's not that I'm in a plane. In fact, I don't fly <laughs> any longer. Okay. Okay. Um, it's, it's that it feels like the sensation of that, right. you know, of your ear like popping. An, like an inner pressure. pressure, yeah. Absolutely. I, yeah, and I, I'm still going to tell you, is it something that's significant, that it's drawing your attention? Listen, yes. But who's drawing your attention? It could be your higher self, it could be one of your guides, or it could be a person in spirit, or it could be that telepathically and empathically you are connected to somebody who's right here in their physical body who's thinking about you. And it's only going to be practice listening more to see if something more comes, follow up, you know, as soon as you get that feeling, see what happens in the next half hour to see if something is being told to you, okay? Mm -hmm. You will eventually be able to interpret that. That's what I call you're getting a symbol. For you, that's a symbol that says listen. But we yes. don't quite know what you're listening to yet. That, that, that's going to take further study, okay? Yes, yes. Yes, thank you yeah, so Susan, much. Susan, thanks so much. Good, good insights for me to share with everybody, and I hope the answers to your questions will give you some some help in, in getting over that hump. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Blessings Thank to you, you Lisa. And, and likewise. Right. And Lisa, who's next on our line? Well, I'm going to go into the chat room for this one. We have a, a gal named Anna. She is an Aquarius. She's from Queensland, Australia. She's thankful that her mom is okay and will be coming home from the hospital soon. Her question is, how can you shift the energy around your home from procrastination and fear into embracing change and organization? The energy and physical stuff around my home can be very cluttered, and then it's hard to move that clutter and get rid of things to get things done. Any tips or insights? Oh, Anna, you really know how to ask those questions. <laughs> Let me just tell you that uh, we could write a book on that. And as a matter of fact, um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but you do have writing skills. So I'm going to suggest to you that since you're the one who's working through this, that as you work through it, you take copious notes and let this be the subject of your future book. It would be a fabulous book and it would be a good seller. Um, now, number one is that, you, and you are correct in this, is that your outer world folks and your inner world get reflected. This is one of the reasons in my series of psychic protection tips online, I made a point of saying, and I know some people were insulted by this, but I made a point of saying that it's important in your life to bring cleanliness into every aspect of what you do. Now, of course, cleanliness is relative. If you live outdoors in a tent, you're not going to be able to keep as clean a home situation as you are if you, you know, live in a great household with maids and servants, you see. So everything is relative. But to the best of your ability, you should be keeping yourself clean in mind and body and emotion. And if you do that, that you do that first, that cleanliness will expand into your environment. Now, what's interesting is they're linked. You can also reverse it. You can clean up your environment, and then you're going to find it easier to keep yourself clear and to meditate and have a clear mind and not get involved in all the drama. Um, 
it is a fact that at this time in our Earth's evolution, we have more people involved in emotional drama than ever before. And half of the things that people get so emotionally upset about, tomorrow they don't even remember. They're living in drama. When I see people who are living in that drama energy, and believe me, I do it myself sometimes too, so none of us are exempt, I literally see the aura, the energy field around them filled with all of the, this um, darkness, this little shooting lightnings and scribbly stuff. Uh, they, they look frankly like pig pen in the comic strip. So to me, when you get into that state where your emotions are all boggled, well, you're doing pig pen the character. You're, you're taking on that, that aura of, of dirtiness. Now, here's the thing. If you're living in that kind of emotional space, or if someone in your household is, that is going to start to permeate the whole household. And I think this is what Anna's talking about. And the first thing you know, you've got a mess every place, especially every place that that person was. And it's not just the physical mess. It's the emotional mess that corresponds to it. So, for example, if they go into the kitchen to make a sandwich and you follow them in, everything from that sandwich is spread around the kitchen from one end to the other, and you're, you're faced with a conflict because the part of you that wants them to start cleaning their act up does not want to be in that kitchen, doesn't want to clean the kitchen, and most certainly doesn't want to clean their mess up because that's not your job. But if you want to remain clean and clear, and you're not able to take that person who's the pig pen person in your environment and ask them to leave, then you have no choice. You've got to clean to double. You've got to straighten up and clean for yourself, and you've got to straighten up and clean for them. And this interesting thing's going to happen. If you start to clean the environment around you in spite of their making the mess, Eventually, when they are living in a clear, clean environment that's beginning to impose itself on their own psyche, they will move out all by themselves because they're not going to be able to stand the clean. Either that or they will start to settle down, be less involved with that emotional drama, be easier to relate to, there'll be less tension, less stress, less anxiety in the household. Okay, now there's a couple of shortcuts that will help. In addition to starting with yourself and keeping yourself very clean inside and out, i.e. showers, bathing, salt baths, as clear as you can, you can also clear your house energetically. And in the back, I don't want to go into the details. It'll take a little too long. But in the back of my Psychic Development Level 1 workbook, it's available on my site and on Amazon.com, the Anastasia System of Psychic Development Level 1, in the back of that book, there's a whole little ritual for clearing your home. And you can use that same ritual for clearing your workspace, clearing your car, and that's energetically clearing it. So if you clear yourself, and if you now clear your environment energetically, and then you begin to pick up your environment, or at least to put things in piles, guess what? All of a sudden, that energy is going to start to settle out and it's going to get easier each day to start to create more and more and more clarity both in the world around you as well as in your own being and in your own mind. Okay, and I think that probably covered it well and like I said, I, I can't touch every aspect of this because it would take a whole thick book to do that. But I would love to see that book one day, so please write it. And Lisa, who is our next person? Alrighty, I'm going to go down to Christina with a K. Christina, you're unmuted. Hi. Hello, Christina. Oh, I'm so nervous. I've never done this before. <laughs> oh, there's nothing. I don't bite. Nobody else here does either. We're old friends. <laughs> Christina, where are you calling from? I am calling from Edmonton, Canada. Oh, I love that area. It's just beautiful up there, especially this time of year. Mm-hmm, yes. And what's your sun sign? Um, Aries. 
Uh huh. So you, if you look at where I'm putting my cursor, you're right here, second house on the chart. You have old stuff popping back into your life right now, huh? Yep. Okay. And what would you like to know about today? And what do you have to be most grateful for in this world right now? Um, actually, I, uh, I actually with my spiritual church, um, we spent the night out. Um, we had a retreat last night, and then I came back today. Last night there was there was no running water. You know the really putrid outhouses, and so when I came home today, all I kept saying was just, you know, all these little things. I was just so thankful for my running water and, and you know, for my, for my house and for my surroundings as much as, you know, I might complain about it at times, and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, I'm so glad you did that. So few people do, Christina, and unless we yeah. experience those things, we don't really uh, cherish what we have, what we're also lucky, lucky to have, so thanks for sharing that. That's great. Um, yeah. And what's your question? Oh boy, I have so many I just don't even know because you're right. I have a lot of old things popping up. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, the reason um, here's a quickie astrology lesson. Here's the reason I said that the south node of the moon, which is in this house, this is Aries. Okay, that's the glyph, the symbol with the cursor showing. Yep. And this is the south node, which is also in Aries. And the south node is where you're coming from over the lifetimes. It's past stuff from this lifetime as well. And this little job, the red guy next to it, is Uranus, also in Aries. And Uranus always brings in unusual, strange occurrences. Often funny things having to do with electrical energy. <laughs> but whatever it is, it's going to be stuff that you've seen before. It's not new, but it might have a new slant. It might have a new way of approaching it. Um, which, in which way do you mean about the electrical energy? It could affect anything from your electromagnetic energy coming out of your hands, like if you do massages, to uh, things like the electric going off in your house, <laughs> to your yeah, internet okay. flipping on and off, or lights flashing. Uh, electrical energy is really interesting, and it could also affect nerves and nervousness and even the nervous system. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. This is, uh, it's all kind of new to me. I, you know, um, so just I'm, I actually have your first two levels, your, your books. Oh, awesome. Um, I haven't actually done the practicing yet, but I have read, and I am really excited when I can find a partner. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, as far as partners are concerned, anyone on here, if you're studying my psychic development via my e-books, um, mm -hmm. I, I welcome you to go onto my Facebook, and um, if, you, if you go on my Facebook and you, and you uh, say, hey, I'm studying Sandy's psychic development, and I'm looking for a partner, they are, someone is usually going to friend you and say, I will be glad to partner with, with you. Um, and also, if you're actively studying, you can sh shoot an email through to Lisa. That's Lisa S.A. Inc. at AOL.com. And she will look for somebody or ask you to join our Facebook group for the class if you're that far advanced with it. And you'll be able to find somebody to partner on there. Okay? Not okay. everybody has somebody... You know, I, I really would love for everybody to have a partner in their home that they can practice with, but it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you need to find somebody through the Internet, and thank God we have a, a, a situation in our world right now that we have the Internet. Isn't that wonderful? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, oh, boy, I don't even know which one to go with. Um, right now, I actually, I have my, my oldest daughter. Um, she has her friend that's been living with us since January. They were best friends, and then just they slowly, you know, started drifting. And now my daughter's like, you know, I wish she would just move out. And I, I don't know what happened with them. And I'm just, it, it makes it really awkward at times when they're both in the house at the same time. And I just feel like I don't know if I should approach it. Like, how do I try to talk to them or leave it be? Or I don't know what happened between them. Um, claiming it was nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look at this from an entirely different point of view. Who's the mom? I'm, I'm the mom. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're the mom. Um, your daughters, notice I say daughters, because you didn't just take your daughter's friend in as a friend who was going through a hard time. You took her in and absorbed her into yourself as a daughter. Right. So what you've done, and be conscious of this, you know, your daughter asked her girlfriend to come and live with her, and what she ended up with was a sister. <laughs> right. That changed their relationship. And siblings have a way of competing. And so I suspect what's happening is you've got some competition between them and the household that you didn't have before. And your daughter's friend 
isn't her friend anymore. Your daughter's friend is your daughter. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. Now right. you are the mom. You are the one who makes the rules, and you are the one who lays down the law. And your daughters are so so lucky that I am not the mom. <laughs> and I can I can just hear Lisa snickering in the background because she's watched this one. Um, my way of handling this would be to either ask the one who is not truly your daughter to leave. That's option one. Option two is to change your behavior, change the rules. Your daughter gets the stuff because she's your daughter. The friend is just a friend who's visiting. And if you change right. that in your mind, it changes how you relate to them. And right. the third way of handling it is to sit them both down together, say, okay, girls, I really don't know what's going on here, and I don't care. This is my house. You live in my house because I let you live here. And if you guys don't work this out between the two of you quietly in such a way that it does not bother me, I am asking you to leave to the girlfriend and to your daughter, and it's your fault. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was, I was leaning towards how quick number three. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's it's a it's a rough one. It's a rough situation because I I realized my guides are telling me that. You know, you really did help this young woman out, and you have helped her out in more ways than you can possibly imagine. But it is now at a point where she's backsliding into some old behaviors, and you're kind of looking the other way, and your daughter is feeling like she's being pushed out. And so very likely, it's time for her to no longer be living with you. And you're just having a hard time with that because you have a really big heart, and you know you've been able to help her, and you know that she mm -hmm. needed that family. And when she first came on board, she was a phenomenal asset. She was an addition to your family that everybody welcomed. And now it's not just your daughter who is saying, I wish she'd move out. It's everybody in the whole household who's feeling very uncomfortable by her presence. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So, But what you can do is make arrangements, find out what's going to be the best way for her to move to the next place that she's going to move to. You know, don't just throw her out on her ear is what I'm suggesting. Oh, you, no, of course. You, you know, let your, let your children see that um, there's a right way of handling and doing things, and it can be beneficial mm -hmm. and helpful to everyone. And when I ask my guides, will you, she and your daughter remain friends after that, do you know something? I think they will. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. Yep. Hey, thank you very much for sharing, and I wish you a lot of luck. I know that's kind of a tough position to be in. Oh, yeah, I've got a few of those tough positions at the moment. <laughs> well, That's and, why I didn't know which one I wanted to bring up. <laughs> yeah, and you, you're going to be, and you know, life is changing, life is shifting. And if you allow yourself to go with the flow and listen, remember the woman who was talking about earlier about hearing? Listen with all of your senses and listen inwardly, listen to your heart, that gut feeling, and you'll make mm -hmm. the right decisions. Okay. Right. Is there any chance to have time for one more quick thing? Um, I really, you know, I'm running out of time because I'm I've only gotten to like five of you, and I want to catch more people. <laughs> so can you can you call back in next month and write that one down, and we'll redo it? Absolutely. You okay. Betcha. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. For your time. You're welcome. And Lisa, who's next? I'm going to race through people and see if I can't get as many questions as I can in this next 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm probably not going to pronounce this correctly, but I've already warned them that I probably wouldn't. It's Manuela. Oh, I love that name. Is that how you pronounce your name, or Manuela? Yeah, Manuela. Perfect. Say again. Manuela. How can I help you this evening? Uh, I, I'm just wondering a little bit uh, which direction to take. Uh, okay, and where are you calling from? Uh, from Norway. Oh wow, you are a long way away. And uh, and what's your sun sign? Uh, I'm a double Leo with the uh, Cancer rising. Okay, so you're you're and in tonight's class, you're right over here where my cursor is. And what is the thing you're grateful for this evening? Uh, 
to get a reading with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. You just made my night. <laughs> and what what is your question? Um, I just uh, I wonder what my purpose is so, and what direction to take right now. Okay. Well, so, this is interesting because you know we have many different purposes. And so this is there are two there are two questions right there. Your overall purpose in this yeah. lifetime is to have self acceptance and personal happiness, and to be willing to give to yourself the love you give to others. That's your overall purpose. Your immediate purpose right now. I just pulled this card. It is the six of pentacles, and that immediate purpose is balance your finances. Too much money is going out, not enough is coming in. You've got to take care, uh, you've got to tighten the belt and catch up with your debt so that you can be in a better place financially and establish that balance and you're going to feel better about so much in your life. And you also said that um, in addition to your purpose, you wanted to know what direction you should be taking right now. And uh, I'm going to ask you, have you been thinking about um, going back to school? Oh, uh, what kind of? Uh, something, I would say something traditional, something perhaps that concerns either uh, either the law or something where you would be working with government or government agencies or big business. Um, that would require... More schooling, yes, <laughs> exactly. That's why I asked my guides are saying that you would really be good at and like to do something that involved legal aspects of things. Your mind works that way. And an opportunity is going to come along. And when it does, it will also involve where well, you'll need to have some training or some education. And that will be an indicator that that's the next direction in your life. Okay. Okay. Manuela, good luck to you. Yeah, thank you. It's been a pleasure. And Lisa, who else has their hand up or needs a, has a question from the chat room? And I'm going to unmute Stacy. Hello, Stacy. Hey, you're unmuted. Hello. Hi, Sandy. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Stacy? I'm well, thank you. I'm from New York. And um, I'm on the cusp between Taurus and Gemini. My birthday is May 21st, so I'm not really sure where I'm at. Well, we know you're in this house, and it's empty. See okay. my cursor? And that doesn't yes. mean that your life is empty at all. It just means that all the things that are going on for you right now are going on through the aspects, i.e., other people are affecting you <laughs> in a big way. Okay. <laughs> and what is it that you would like to know about this evening? Well, I was at your other webinar about the guides, uh -huh. and I saw a mystical animal. Now, is that possible that a mystical animal could be a guide? Of course. Absolutely. Of course. Um, first off, when we're looking at the kind of guides that we were meeting in that webinar, we weren't meeting earthly guides, you know, people that we run into here on the physical plane. We were meeting non-physical beings. And those mythical animals do exist on the non-physical planes, i.e. somebody dreamed it up. They, didn't, they either dreamed it up because it existed out there on another plane, or they created it when they dreamed it up. Either way, it still exists. So the answer is correct. And I oh, would okay. study what the uh, characteristics of that mythical creature are, because those are the characteristics that it would be helping you either to develop or giving you that strength to work with in your life. Okay. All right. Because I also, um, Dr. Weiss, I had um, a meditation with him, and I also saw the same mystical animal. So it was oh, like it happened yeah. twice. Yeah. yeah. I'd say, well, when, when things like that happen, and two different people and the same animal twice, and it just pops in, um, yeah. I think you can safely say that that's yours. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Stacy. Thank you. Thank and, you. 
And who is next, Lisa? Allison, you are unmuted. Good evening. Good evening to you too, Allison. So where um, are you from? I am from West Virginia. Lovely, lovely I, state. I, we enjoy it a lot. And uh, I am a Cancer. Uh huh. And, and so here we find you right here in the fifth house astrologically. Life is good right now. Uh, there's there's some really nice people around you, <laughs> and if you're if you're married or dating somebody special, that Venus there, there's a lot of warmth. That's nice. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say <laughs> I I am thankful for the people in my life and um, that we've been lucky enough to have in it, um, but unfortunately we're also going through a lot of conflicts in our life, and I mean it seems silly in comparison to a lot of other people in the world are dealing with. Um, but I, it's repeated itself so frequently that I feel like there's a lesson to be learned. And I was just wondering if there was any insight um, to if we are pursuing these things correctly or if I'm just getting this totally wrong every time. Okay, well that's kind of a very general question. So you're, let's try and pull it in. So otherwise, I, otherwise okay. my guides could be answering something different from what you're really asking. So let's be a little bit more sure. specific. You, you've got a repetitive issue going on in your life that's involving the yes, same always. situation coming up over and over again. Now, is that situation involving a person, involving people, involving business or money? Let, let's tighten it. <laughs> No, I'm sorry. It's no, it, it's been just uh, legal issues where okay. um, breach of contracts type of issues. Okay. Where people say they're going to do something, and I believe that they're going to do it, and then it seems to fall apart and get into a very large whole mess. Yeah. Okay. And you want to know? I guess you want to know first. Is that is that tendency to get involved in those kind of things going to ever stop? Okay. That's number okay. one. And uh, my guys are saying not on its own. You will have to stop it. That's number one. Okay, and number two, if you take really, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to curse folks, if you take really hard-ass ways of dealing with people right from the get-go, is that what the lesson is? And my guides are showing me an ace of swords, absolutely. That's how you have to do it. So it's, no matter whether you're having work done by a friend or a family member, it doesn't matter. Your attorney draws up the contract, the contract has dates, deadlines, money involved with it. They don't perform, bam, you know, <laughs> they're, they, they, they're, in, they're in court or the money's right. being paid back to you. You're going to have to set that up. Um, I had some, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've done anything wrong to attract this, Allison. Um, sometimes there are certain energies that just work that way. I had, years back, I had a couple who actually decided that they were going to keep an attorney on retainer because when, either, when, either, when they were apart, they didn't have this issue. But when they came together as a couple, all of a sudden it brought out all these legal issues in their lives and both of them were in nonstop litigation constantly. And so they just kept an attorney on retainer. It was cheaper to pay the guy and always have somebody that they could just chew a contract through to, and then their issues stopped. Okay. Thank okay? you. You're very yes. welcome. And good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I think I have time for one more. Lisa, who is the lucky person going to be? Oh, I should get money for that. <laughs> Anybody want to bid? All right, I'm going to go down here to Susanna, if I can hit the button. Susanna, you are unmuted. Yes, hi. Good evening. Hello, Susanna. How are you this evening? Hi there. I'm from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and um, I'm a Cancer, and I'm grateful for uh, just this moment, just being here and being the last person to get <laughs> I wasn't expecting this, so thank you. Very quickly, because I know you're uh, running out of time. Um, I guess my question is, uh, at this particular time, uh, embarking on a whole new chapter in my life, and I'm wondering if um, there's any specific messages for me as to 
uh, what particular directions or what things I should be, you know, aware of, what my best, uh, what are my best, my be what's my best plan of action? Or maybe that's too broad of a question. Well, yeah, that was like three or four questions all at the same time. Um, I have a question for you. Um, is yeah. your father passed? Because there's a, there's a father energy around you that's coming to you very, very strongly. And uh, if it is a grandfather, it's a grandfather you would have been really close to who felt like a father. It's, it's that kind of strength. He gives oh. you this. Go ahead. No, no, I'm just listening. Well, he gives you this giant, giant hug, uh, first off. And he says that he's very, very proud of you. And he says you have to trust yourself because you make good decisions. Uh, he says you're asking Sandy about something that you already have a plan of attack for. <laughs> he's calling you out on that one. And That's he true. <laughs> and he says that he That's says kind of true. I just want confirmation. Yep, and and he also says that you're planning on I don't know if you're walking out on somebody or leaving a situation, but he says you've already decided you're going to do this. You're just waiting for the right time to do it, and I hope I'm not, you know, blowing your secret. No, no, <laughs> no, not at all. No, because I I'm I'm married, and and there's nothing happening on that front, so mm -hmm. I don't know what that might be referring to. Well, apparently, whatever it is you're planning on doing, the action you're going to take is going to shut the door on someone or something. It's a situation. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Well, that might well be. I'll have to give it some thought. But mm -hmm. that's really interesting that you picked up on him. <laughs> well, he's, he came through loud and clear. You've got a very, very powerful guidance coming from him. Not, not everybody gets to have a past relative who is their guide. But he's not, uh, he's not just, you know, a dead person coming in to say hello. He is your guide. He's with you. Really? And you yeah. think it's a grandfather? It's, a, it's, it's one of your grand, it's a grandfather. It's a, what it is, is a father energy. So when I say a father, ener a father energy, so this would be a person who fathered you, who gave you that warmth and that support and that when you were a child. And you I did actually know him. He was alive when you, when you were a youngster. Okay, fabulous. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Sandy. You're very welcome. Hey, this folks, thank you. I wish you much, much luck, Suzanne. Thanks for calling in. And okay. everyone who has attended this uh, psychic hour with me this evening, I want to thank you all very, very much for giving me so much of your time. It's been delightful. I hope that as I went through all these different questions with uh, the many people who called in, that some of that information was also for you because my guides try to answer something for everyone who's on the call, whether you actually had a chance to uh, ask it verbally or write it out or not. Blessings to you. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. And I'll see you back here next month. And uh, I think Lisa has been probably writing that date in, um, but it looks like next month the Psychic Hour is going to be on September 14th. Sorry about looking away, but I had to go and read it. September 14th. So I'll see you all back then, I hope. Until then, have a wonderful tail end of our lovely summer. Bye-bye. It's actually September 7th. Is it the 7th? Okay. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Good night, everyone.